What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be reviewing the brand new Elgato Wavelink 1 and Wavelink 3 USB microphones. Just hit the market, so if you're interested in picking up a new mic for, you know, voiceovers, streaming, gaming, anything like that, got you guys covered today. We'll do a mic test for both of them, take a deep dive into the software, which is very, very important, and run over all the stuff you're going to want to know in case you're thinking of picking these up. So these have been teased by Elgato for a few months now. They've definitely built some hype, I'd say. So I'm pumped they're finally here. So once you get it in and unbox, the mic itself is actually very simple and pretty small looking overall. I'd say it's compact, you know? Not gonna take up too much space on your desktop. Now, since the one and three have different physical features to the actual mic itself, we'll take a look at each one. So starting with the one, you have that nice sleek all black body with just a volume dial on the front. And once you plug it in with the included USB-C cable, that little ring will illuminate. And what this dial does does not actually control the overall volume of your mic but it adjusts the actual headphone output. So on the back of both mics, you have, like I said, the USB-C port, which is powered to your PC. And then next to that, you have a headphone jack. So you can plug in headphones and monitor your audio. So that's what that volume dial is going to control there, with the actual audio you're listening to. And also, if you wanna mute your mic, you just press in that dial. So now that you know that, we can check out the Wavelink 3, which does have some increased physical features to the mic. So you'll notice a few things on the front. You'll have the microphone logo, a headphone logo, and then kind of like a mix logo. And these will let you switch up the actual microphone output volume, the headphone volume, and the audio mix. You'll notice seven LED dots underneath those. And when you press in the actual dial, that's how you can go to change all three of those sources, if you will. So if I wanna change up my microphone output volume, I could do that. If I wanna change then the audio of what I'm listening to, if I'm monitoring with headphones, you press in the dial, adjust that accordingly. And then for the third one, if you wanna adjust the mix of your real-time PC audio and your monitoring audio, you can do that. Then additionally, on top of the microphone, you have a touch sensitive mute button. They each come included on their own mic stand, but each of them come with an adapter. So if you want, you can take them off this included desktop stand and use them on a larger thread if you have your own boom arm or a mic arm, anything like that. And before we move on, we'll talk about the actual microphone itself. It's the same capsule used in both the one and the three. And it's a 17 millimeter Electret mic. It is also cardioid, so it's designed to pick up your vocal pattern while talking primarily into the front of it, not so much picking up what's going on behind it. Okay, so now we're gonna head back to the PC and do an in-depth mic test. Make sure you're wearing headphones so you could hear this, obviously, the clearest, and it's gonna be all raw, unedited audio. Okay, so like I said, make sure you're wearing headphones so you could hear exactly how this microphone sounds. This whole test is gonna be unedited, but, there's a lot to go over here, so sit tight, because usually during a review, the actual you know software is the least important, most boring aspect of the actual review. But in this case, with the microphone, the Wavelink software is equally as important to the Wavelink mic. So a lot to touch on, be patient, you're gonna wanna pay attention. Uh, three quick things before we get into the actual test. So the mic I'm using right now is the Wavelink 3. I will do a comparison between the 3 and the 1 after this demo. Um, as you can see, I have the Wavelink 3 on my own desktop arm. The Wavelength 1 is on the included stand that these both come with. So using the included adapter, I have this on my own arm. And then point three is my headphones terminate in a quarter inch jack. So I am using this with my own amp and DAC for my own streaming setup and my own sort of setup at my desk. Uh, so as you can see, it is not plugged into the actual microphone, but everything can still be controlled in the Wavelength program, which we will get into in a second. So right now, for this sound test, I have it at around 20% on the little LED indicator here. It's on the second LED. And this is where I think between probably two and three, it sounds the best. And just real quick, doing some typing, clicking, you know, kind of emulating that gaming, streaming ambiance, if you will, with hearing this in the background. And yeah, it's still gonna pick it up. You're still gonna hear that because just due to proximity, the nature of where this is and all my peripherals on my desk, it's very close. It's all bunched together right here. So you're still gonna pick it up. Even though it's a cardioid mic picking up my vocal pattern primarily right here, just again, due to the space on the desktop, it's, you're still gonna hear that. Now I have it bumped to around half. So this is the fourth LED light on here, half volume. And as you heard, it did get louder. I'd say significantly louder. 
And it's not to the point where it's gonna be clipping yet. Just checking the settings right now. It's coming in at around negative six decibels, which isn't that bad at all. However, they have something built in called clip guard. So now I have it at 100%. And as you could hear, it's loud. It's very loud, but it's not to the point where it's unusable. Okay, usually when you're at 100% and it'd be clipping and stuff, there would be a lot of distortion, a lot of it would just kill the mic. It would sound like fuzzy radio. But here at 100%, it's still usable. And with ClipGuard, if I was gaming, streaming, putting on a show for my audience, if I was getting real pissed off because someone's hacking midstream, they're stream sniping. Ah! That was still usable. It wasn't unsalvageable, okay? So very loud, not the best, but not to the point where it's gonna be just horrible. Again, I wouldn't use it up in there. I'm keeping it at around 20 to 30% volume, which is where I think it sounds the best. But even if you do have it all the way up, you're not, have to, you're not gonna have to worry about peaking and clipping to the point where it's gonna be too distorted for your audience. Now, the more important aspect, I'm gonna say, that is Wavelength, the actual software. You have to have a Wavelength mic to use with the Wavelength program, so you cannot use your own mic with Wavelength. Okay, so what Wavelength does is it gives you independent audio sources that you can then channel into your monitor mix, which is what you hear, and then also into a separate stream or a separate channel called Stream Mix, which is what the audience hears. And for example, I'll show you a demo real time, but say I wanted to listen to some music while I was gaming but obviously due to copyright on like Twitch and YouTube, you can't listen to, you know, just mainstream music. If I wanted to listen to that, but I wanted to play something more stream friendly for you guys, I could listen to what I want to listen to, but play something different for you that you would hear that I wouldn't. So you wouldn't hear my music, I would. I wouldn't hear your music, but you would. With Wavelength, you have completely different audio channels that you can then source into different Channel. So just taking a look real quick right here. This headphone icon is the monitor mix, what I'm hearing. This sort of stream mix icon, which is for this channel down here, is what you're hearing. You can change that up for each source. So this is the microphone. And what I'm doing right now for this setup, I am recording independently. So you're just gonna be hearing the mic. You're not gonna be hearing the stream mix, but I'll still show you the levels and stuff real time. So like I said, for example, right now I'm in Spotify. I have music popping. I'm bumping some ace right now. You can't hear that though, okay? But if I wanted to kind of link Spotify to what the stream would hear, I would go over to this, which is the music. You click this button right here, which is what's gonna let you tie all of your outputs to the wavelength sort of you know uh, stuff in here. So Spotify, right here. This output right now is default, but I'm gonna change that, where'd it go? I'm gonna change that to wavelength music. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit play again. And you can see music is going. You see, I'll, I'll stop talking, but you could still see the actual audio levels on the music channel is still going. So usually if this was recording the actual stream mix, you would hear this, but what I can do is I could turn that all the way down to the point where the stream wouldn't hear it, but I still would. And then vice versa, if I wanted to switch that up where I didn't hear it, but you guys did, I could do that. But again, I'm not doing that for the sake of this. You're hearing a different, just the mic channel. Same thing goes for browser. Say you wanted to watch a YouTube video in the background or whatever, just on your internet browser. You go to the, uh, the sound settings here. I'm using Chrome, so I would link then Chrome to Wavelink browser. I'm gonna go over, play my video. And you can see the audio, browser, it's all going. You guys can't hear it, I can. Boom, boom, boom. You have all that flexibility now to change up all of the different audio channels and mix them into separate channels of what I'm hearing versus what you're hearing. So again, music going, you guys can't hear it, I can. If I didn't want you to hear it, I would turn that down. If I want you to hear that, i turn that down. If you're playing a game, you would then link that game to the game um, sort of setting right here for this input in the wavelength. All independent sources, all independent channels. And this is huge. This is gonna make people's lives so much easier now because you can do it all with just one program and this is gonna be a streamer's best friend. Promise you that. 
And then whether I wanted to tether this into OBS, uh, a different sort of streaming software or whatever, all you do then is go into the settings, go into uh, audio here, and then it's not gonna be your desktop audio. Your desktop audio is gonna be, you can just you know, decide whether you want it to be your stock desktop audio or those independent sources, but to get that stream output like you see in the Wavelinks uh, settings, you would go into your mic and then click right here where it says Wavelink Stream. So the audio coming from now, again, play some music, play the background, that is all gonna get mixed into one channel that I have the ability to change up and mix. And right here, as you can see, um, this little green icon means I'm hearing the monitor mix. If I wanted to change that to the stream, I would be hearing what the stream is hearing. So you have very expansive software that lets you change everything up, give you independent sources for literally everything. And that is awesome. Now we're gonna switch gears and do the mic test between the Wavelink 3 and the Wavelink 1. Okay, so now is the sound test and the comparison between the Wavelink 3 and the Wavelink 1. Now they are the same exact capsule, so the same actual microphone. The main difference here between the two physical microphones, not the construction, is that the 3 is capable of a 96,000 hertz sample rate, while the Wavelink 1 is just capable of 48,000. So you pretty much get double the sample rate here. And I looked it up, there is a pretty hot debate going on on whether it's even worth 96,000 over 48, 48 is the standard. Can you hear a difference between the two? Um, the untrained ear, probably not. In a stream setting where you know there's a lot of other channels and as you saw audio sources, that sample rate might not be a big deal. That's gonna be more important with things like podcasting and stuff where you can go in and then edit that sound quality to enhance it, take out background noise, but just the actual mic quality itself, this is the one versus the three. Again, you'll, as you hear flipping back and forth, to me, they really don't sound different at all. And one thing to note, which is pretty interesting, is that OBS doesn't even have um, 96,000 hertz as an option. OBS is limited to just 48,000. So you can't even really take advantage of that 96,000 hertz with the three in OBS. So yeah, figured I'd point that out, but again, still do a comparison between the two mics. All right, so as you heard right there with the mic test, and yes, you heard properly, um, after listening back, I did kind of mix wavelength with wavelength a few times because my brain's just more used to saying wavelength versus wavelength, so I kind of combined them. But yeah, either way, uh, the Wavelink software, very awesome, very user-friendly and gives you just a tons of flexibility. So that's gonna be a streamer's best friend, I'm telling you right there. And then also, as you heard, between the one and the three, the sound quality really wasn't too different at all. For the raw, unedited audio, they pretty much sound identical for the most part. And with the only real difference between the two being that the one is a 48,000 hertz sample rate and the Wavelength 3 is 96,000. So it's double, but at the same time, like I showed you, OBS can't even take 96,000 as an input. It's only capable of 48,000. So it's gonna be up to you whether you're going to want to spend the extra $30 for the three for that doubled sample rate, because the Wavelength 1 comes in at 130 and the Wavelength 3 is 160. And yes, while you do get more, you know, controls and stuff like that with the three, honestly, with how impressive the software is and the fact that I would be using that with the one or the three, I don't think the extra 30 bucks is really worth it for the controls. I would be, you know, very happy with buying the one, saving the money and still getting to have all those same controls, but just in now software form versus tangible button form. And another case for just being a tent with the one over the three is the fact that since this is compatible with their stream deck, you can just have all the actual physical controls then on the stream deck instead of the mic. So I think overall for the price, it is still kind of pricey. Yeah, it, it's a bit more expensive than I'd like. I would love to see these start at a hundred, but that's just, you know, wh yeah, why wouldn't I want it to be cheaper? And the mic quality is very good. I have heard better, um, but again, I think the main selling thing here and what's going to drive this home for a lot of people is gonna be the Wavelink software. If that wasn't included, I wouldn't say the microphone, you know, is necessarily 
worth it. Because I've heard other streaming mics out there, um, like the Rode Podcaster, I believe I've tried for $100. That is very, very good. But the software for the Wavelink, I think is what's gonna drive home the sales. Now there are two things I do wanna bring up, kind of on the cons end of things. First is it does recommend you be two fists lengths away from the microphone when you're talking into it. And if you do start to get farther away due to the pickup pattern, it will start to sound kind of um, tinny and like hollowed out if you will, it's because you're farther away. That's gonna be the case for most microphones though. And second, on the back with the included arm that it's on, when you have it powered in with the USB-C cable and your headphones, you will be limited in how the microphone rotates because as you can see, it hits the back right there. Uh, so if it was up a little bit, it might have made you know more sense so it doesn't constantly hit the back. Again, not a big deal. You'll just probably have to unplug and replug it if you're trying to adjust it. And depending on where you have it angled, if you have it on your own boom arm, it could be an issue. Hope this kind of helped you out doing a sound test of each of the mics, breaking it down for you and doing that deep dive into the software. I got to applaud Elgato for what they're doing here because as a combo, very, very impressive. That'll wrap it up for my review, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to check them out, I'll put both the links for you in the description down below. And if you did like this video, if it helped you out, let me know by giving it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.